Hi, my name is Tracy Redden, and this is the first video of my series for Calculus 1. This is Limits and Introduction. It's section 1.1 in the book Anton, but all the books, all the calc books start with this. Our goal is to calculate limits numerically in this section. Now, just a quick overview of what limits are used for is limits are used in differential calculus to find the equation of the tangent line to a function f at the point p, which is what I have pictured here. So right here is my point p, and this pink line, which is now red, is our tangent line to our function f of x. And the name of this is called differential calculus. When we get to chapter 5, we learn how to um, find integrals, and that will be called integral calculus, and limits are used in integral calculus to find the area between the function and the x-axis. And so we'll, we'll calculate that and then there's lots of applications. So to get started today, we're gonna to be doing limits numerically. We're going to start with defining a tangent line. But before I do that, I want us to talk about a tangent line to a circle. So the definition of a tangent line to a circle is a line that crosses a circle exactly one time. The definition of a secant line to a circle is a line that intersects a circle twice. So now we're going to define secant and tangent line in general. Now remember our tangent only crosses it once if that were true in general, then for this picture, L would be a tangent line. But we can see it doesn't look the same, right? So L here is not a tangent line. L is tangent at P, and L is not tangent at Q. L is a secant line. Okay, so now let's talk about limits. Let's look at this picture. I've drawn a function f of x, and I've drawn several secant lines and a tangent at p. As you can see, I've placed, I've called these all q. So as you can see, as q is approaching p, as it's getting closer and closer to, and closer to, as you can see, the closer Q, as Q approaches P, the secant line is getting closer, the slope of the secant line is getting closer to the slope of the tangent line. So let's write that out. We're going to consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 all over x minus 1. As you can see, when we plug in x equals 1, we have 1 minus 1 on the bottom, which is 0, and we have 1 minus 1 on the top, which is 0. So we have the form 0 over 0, which is meaningless, and we'll see that it's meaningless. So what we want to do is see what is happening to f of x as x approaches 1. And so we will be plugging in values from the left and from the right. So to make this go a little faster, I'm going to factor the top, so the difference of squares, and we notice it has the same factor on the bottom. If I'm going to be plugging in values, I don't need to be plugging in the same thing on the top and bottom. So I'm going to cancel those and we get x plus 1. So from the left, and if we wanted to graph it, we could pretty much this, there's a hole at x equals 1, and the graph is a line. So again, we have these values to the left side of 1 and the values to the right side 
and they all seem to be getting closer and closer to two. So therefore, the limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to two. Again, we might want to write that out. So the real question is why? We talked about the values approaching two from the left and the values approaching two from the right. Okay, so what we have is the limit as x approaches one from the left, that's what that means, of the function x squared minus one over x minus one is equal to two. Let's write that out. The limit as x approaches one from the right is equal to two. So finally, I just want to point out that the limit as x approaches one of our original function is equal to the limit of x plus one when we reduced that function down and both of them equal to two. Can you also see that we could have plugged one into there? One plus one is two. <laughs> So now let's talk about the existence of a limit. L is a real number. We have the limit as x approaches c of our function, if that's equal to L, if and only if the limit as x approaches c from the left of our function is equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right of our function. Which, of course, has to equal to L. Let's do an example. Okay, so here's a function that I've drawn. So let's try to go in here and answer the question. So we want to know the limit of f of x at two coming in from the left, at two coming in from the right, and then this is asking for f of two, where is the function defined at two? You wanna start with that one? I would say it's defined at two right there. So we get three, that's where it's defined. f of two, here's our x equals two, we go up to two and we get three. Okay, coming in from the left. The left of two is this graph right here. This is the graph. What y value is that approaching? What y value is this? Yeah, it's zero. Okay, now coming in from the right. Okay, here's the graph coming in from the right. What y value is that? Coming in from the right, the y value looks like to be four. Good job. One more question. What's the limit as x approaches two f of f x? So remember, this limit only exists if the left limit equals to the right limit. And it doesn't. One of them's zero, one of them's four. They do, do not equal. Therefore, we say this does not exist. Since, if you want to write since, zero doesn't equal to four. The left limit does not equal to the right limit. Okay, our next example. So this is our function. 1 over x squared. So we want to find 0 from the left. OK, so when we look at this graph, looks like we have a vertical asymptote here at 0. And so from the left of 0, from the left of 0, 
we're really only looking at this part of the graph. Where is that graph going? Where is that graph going? It looks like it's going to plus infinity, okay? And from the right of this graph, again, where is that graph going? It looks like it's going to the same place, plus infinity. Now remember, it's plus infinity is the notation only. for the unbounded behavior. It's a vertical asymptote. So now we have the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is plus infinity. And again, it is the behavior only because it is a DNE, since it's not a real number. So in this problem, we're going to have to write out the definition. Absolute value. So we write out the definition. If x is greater than or equal to 0, we can just drop the absolute value. And of course, it, we have to put a negative in front if the x is strictly less than 0. This becomes... Simplifying it, 1 minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0, if x is less than 0. If you want to graph that. Okay, so here's the graph. Now let's answer the question. So we have to take the limit. As x approaches 0 from the left of our function, and we have to take the limit as x approaches from the right of our function. So from the left, it's approaching negative 1. From the right, It's approaching 1. Okay, so that wasn't actually the question. The question was the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. And we had to do the left limit and the right limit to see if the limit as x approaches 0 actually exists. So we can see here that one of them's 1 and one of them's negative 1. So the left limit does not equal to the right limit. Minus 1 doesn't equal to 1. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 is a DNE. It does not exist. And that wraps up the first section. Thanks for watching.